Hi, everybody. This is Chris Pistorius again with you with the Dental and Orthodontic Marketing Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. And Kevin Wheeler, who is the president of Simplified. Oh, did I do that right? Simplified COO. Did I get that right, Kevin? You did. Gee, I just kind of balked right there. But so Kevin is the president of Simplified COO. And this is a really cool concept. And by the way, Kevin is our guest today. And this is something I, we haven't really talked about here on the podcast is being able to bring in a COO when you don't really need a COO, if that makes sense. So you bring somebody in at, that can help you out as a COO role, but you don't have to have them full time and you don't have to pay them full time money. But Kevin, you know way more about this about than me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and, and why you do it? Yeah, Chris. So you know, I saw a need. I, I have many years background in large uh, dental service organizations. And what I saw was a real need from the smaller that wanted to grow, whether it's organic growth or whether it's uh, locations that they want to add. Um, and that's kind of where my mindset is to help in any way I can. And so I was like, let, let me get involved with that. Now, the, the cost is kind of the prohibitive part of a lot of the smaller group practices. So I started a business as a fractional chief operating officer, and my goal was to be able to offer my services at really a fraction of the price of what a full-fledged uh, COO would be. Um, and then my goal is to help in any way that I can, because there's a lot that wraps into that. Um, I do a lot of coaching. Um, I do a lot of project work. Sometimes they just need a SOP manual created for their group. Sometimes they need everything. And so I have clients that kind of range from three offices, two offices to, you know, really the sweet spot seems to be the 10 to 20 is where people are trying to get to and what that dynamic difference is. And so, and, and then my goal is to get them so financially um, secure that they can then find a chief operating officer that can be boots on the ground moving forward. Wow. So you're kind of working your way out of a job, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. But, but onward and upward to, to the next opportunity. And so yeah, that's right. how I want to create more of a footprint on, on helping many groups. In, in dentistry, since it's moving towards the group practice anyway, um, my goal is, is, you know, we all do better in the dental field if we're all doing well. There's, there's not really a, a, com a competition. Um, it's more of an opportunity for patients to get good care wherever they go. Right. So what made you think of this? You've been doing this for six, six or so years now, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. It, again, you know, having that background, um, working with a lot of different larger DSOs, um, I had a lot of success and, and it was really fun and I was honored to, to be able to work for them. But um, in the end, I was just, you know, part of a larger wheel and I just wanted to break off and be able to have a bigger impact than just making one region or one company successful. I wanted to make multiple uh, providers successful. Right. So that was really, you know, where, where my heart was. In it. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I think it's a, it's a great concept. Um, how many practices do you typically work with at one time? Um, usually, depending on the, the size of the groups, I can do about six where I have the bandwidth to make sure that I give them the time. Okay. Um, but I'm always working with groups on what can they financially afford? What do they need? Um, and so sometimes I'll, I'll move around where I'll just have one group and then other times, uh, you know, four or five and, and six seems to be about as far as I would want to go, depend, again, depending on the size of those yeah. groups, because I want them to get the attention they deserve. Right, right, right. Now, do you work with individual practices at all, too, or is it mostly just uh, groups? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I work with individual and a lot of those requests come with uh, coaching on case acceptance. Oh, and so all in all, that's a big passion of mine because that's not, that's an immediate impact in revenue. So there's a lot of systems that I can create. Um, but really the, you know, when, when you see immediate impact on revenue, you know, then everyone gets excited. And they're more open to listening to other ideas that you have. So I dive right into the case acceptance because it's fun. Um, it really starts on that patient experience journey all the way to them saying yes to the dentistry that's needed. Right, right, right. So 
it's almost kind of like hiring a coach or a consultant, but with kind of packaged as a fractional COO. Would, would that be a, a, a way yes. to put that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many great consultants out there and, and business coaches. Um, I, I try to view myself a little bit different because I'm going to get much more involved. Um, I'm not just sharing good ideas and then following back up of how those ideas worked. Um, I make a lot of visits. I'm on the road a lot. Okay. And so I get into the office and make sure that I can see the systems working, um, you know, as much as possible. And I'm there, you know, with them, you know, holding their hand through the process of, again, whatever they need. Yeah. So it's, a, it's much more detailed than, right. than some consultants would get. I see. Got you. So what, what kind of, uh, what kind of tips or advice would you give somebody, you know, we're all kind of coming out of this COVID fog, if you will. What do, what do you see going on in the industry now? Do you see the industry as a whole rebounding or some, some things that, you know, you're telling the, the practices that you work with on how to come out of COVID? Yeah. So one thing I noticed right away that with the slowdown initially um, in the pandemic, it gave an opportunity to go back to the basics right. and go back to some systems that, that maybe were in place and just got lost. And we're still at that point where this is a great opportunity to reset. Um, you know, a lot of people know what to do. Uh, they just don't know how to implement it and how to follow through. And that's where they need some help. And coming out of the pandemic, um, that's a big focus of mine is, okay, let's reset. Let's get back to the basics. Um, let's make sure the patients are having an amazing experience. And so one thing that I tell a lot of my clients is, Dentistry now, where it stands, is first a behavioral art and second a clinical science. And the groups that understand that and embrace that are really successful. And the ones that aren't are having a little bit more of a struggle coming up. Right. Yeah, that may, totally makes sense for sure. Um, so how long do you work with when you're doing these fractional COO services? What's a typical length that you're with them until you have kind of have worked your way out of a job? For the ones that I, I am doing the full COO services, yeah. it seems to be about two years, maybe yeah. just a little bit under that where they're, yeah. again, you know, um, my goal is to get them there as, as quickly as I'd like. Right. But normally I stay engaged because there's um, a lot of things I can do as far as helping them find new practices. Um, what I really thrive on is creating a relationship. So it never truly goes away. Um and, and, and I help them actually recruit and, and you know, train a new COO if they want. So I want to make sure that they feel really good moving forward. And then I still, you know, get lots of phone calls on, you know, let, let's talk about, you know, yeah. some stuff that we had done before. And so, yeah, so it's ongoing. But, but for the most part, um, it's right in that, you know, just under two years. Yeah. Awesome. What, what, what do you like most about the dental industry? Oh, the, the relationship building, you know, I mean, it's a relationship business. Um, you know, some people don't like to talk about it as a sales job, but in the end yeah. it is right. So yeah. you're, you're selling yourself, you're building that trust. Um, and so I actually like that. Um, and I like how it trickles down then to the patient experience. So, you know, it's from the moment you pick up that phone, you know, the information that you get that's different from any other dental office. That's what I always coach. We need nuggets on how we're going to apply the value of the dentistry, not the cost to the patient. And the only way to do that is to find a way to connect with the patient. Yeah. So it's really the connection from the doctor to the team, to the patient that I really enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. What do you least, least like about the dental industry? What do you think you, what would you like to change about it if you could? Um, you know, I, I'm a very optimistic person, so I haven't really gave a lot of thought in that. Um, again, like I say, I don't view that we're in competition with each other, you know, different offices. Um, you know, what, um, I guess what I would like the least are just that those groups that still are in that clinical science minded, the degree on the wall and the white coat mean yeah. you should move forward with dentistry because those, those days are just done. And so, but it also, those opportunities when I'm given, I'm able to show those people. So really what I dislike ends up being a great opportunity to help them you yeah. know, get, get to the goals that they have. 
Yeah. Are you seeing a churn at all um, in terms of kind of what you talked about, the more traditional dentists that are, you know, the, I maybe you call them the, like the baby boomer dentists, the guys that are retiring now, and then the new folks are kind of coming in. Are you seeing a big churn going on between those two uh, generations? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. for the seasoned, you know, dentist, um, there's more emphasis on what will my legacy be? And, and there's so many opportunities now for exit strategies. Right. Whereas before they didn't really think about it till the end, you know, right. and then they were like, gosh, what am I going to do now? There's many groups that approach these dentists and say, you know, Hey, you know, when are you going to retire? You know, we're here for you. You know, a lot of the dentists receive letters from group right. practices saying, Hey, do you want to sell? So that opportunity. And then from the new, um, I, I there's really an openness, um, you know, that uh, uh, an excitement, a buzz for the new graduates um, that's yeah. an all time high because they know they have the opportunity for private. They know they have the group practice. It's just created more opportunities. And so there's a lot more buzz around their success. Right. And do you ever see a situation where you go in and help a new person, whether they're starting from scratch or they're buying an existing practice? Do you get into that business at all? Yes. Yeah, I, I, quite a bit. You know, so whether they're they're looking for an acquisition or starting up a de novo. Um, you know, that was actually in the larger DSO um, world, that part of my life, that was my biggest focus was to help those doctors get ramped up quickly. Oh. Um, and, and taking some of the older mindset of that, when you get your new practice, you work a couple days a week, you do all the hygiene, you know, um, you, you plan a strategy of month eight, then you're going to add specialty if you're going to do that. And, you know, what I found is if you put in the marketing efforts and you're going to get patients on the books, let's say, you know, 80 patients, you know, are going to be on your books as you're opening your office. You need to get going right out the gate, assuming that those patients are going to say yes to dentistry. Right. So I've, I do a lot of coaching on, Let's get started quicker. You can get out of cash burn in month three if you're diligent about it. It doesn't take the old mind of, you know, month nine. Right. You know? And sometimes I've seen it as, as well as, you know, month two. Right. So, um, so that's, a, that's a focus that I, I like to gotcha. get involved with. What would you say to somebody coming out of school or maybe they've been an associate for a year or two, they're ready to do their own practice? Start from scratch or take over an existing practice? Ooh, you know, some of that has to deal with their finances, right? right? So we have to be realistic and and they're gonna be, they're gonna have probably a lot of bills, you know, coming up, a lot of school fees and whatnot. So I would say, you know, my advice would be not to jump right into their own practice right out the gate. Okay. To get there's so many opportunities to join groups or to join other doctors that will give a little bit of mentorship. And they can start planning immediately on what that looks like on their own exit to their own private office. But it's a big hurdle because you've got so much knowledge in your head as a new dentist, right? You've got, um, you're not even thinking about what the patient experience is going to be like. Right. You're just thinking about how am I going to do this crown? Am I going to do this filling? You know, how many patients will I see? What is the flow going to be? So you, you really got to get some practice. And so I have talked to a lot of new grads that are like, you know, my dad's going to, my mom's going to help me get an office rolling right away. And, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bash their goals, but I'm like, okay, but just think about, it. you don't have to rush into this. Right. You know, there, you can get a lot of experience by jumping in with a group. So. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but you know, what I find is in, and I've said this several times on this podcast, but we find new dentists coming out of school. They know a lot about dentistry, certainly, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they know a lot about business, right? right. And, you know, there's a book out there called um, E-Meth Revisited, I think it is, where they talk about, you know, being good or being at the technical work of business or of, of something like being a skilled technical worker is great. But if you don't know how to do the books, how to do sales, how to do marketing, you know, anything else, you're probably not going to have a su successful business. So, Right. I, think it's, I think you're right. I think, you know, new people can learn not only, you know, and refine their skills, but also learn about business as well. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I wouldn't want to take those two on right out the gate. Right. I mean, my clinical aptitude and then my business acumen. Right. <laughs> you know, that's right. a tall mountain to climb right out the gate. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But those that really want to do it, they just need to, to reach out and look for help. 
because right. there's a lot of help out there. They don't have to do it alone. Right. You know, they'll have to work that into their finances, but there's people out there such as myself that that's there to support them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Now, when you work with practices, new or existing, I'm sure you get into some of the marketing aspects of things too. What have you seen work great for dental practices in terms of marketing and bringing in new patients? Yeah. I mean, for me, the internal referral mm. is, is huge, right? So sure. if you're going to, you're going to have to spend money to get people on the books. Once they are, it's going to be the buzz around, you know, the community. Right. So I'm really big on keeping things in line. You know, marketing can get expensive, but it's very necessary. Um, so while you're pouring in those dollars into that, make sure that everyone is a raving fan of you. Right. That you're thinking about, and I, I, I talk about this a lot with teens. Why would somebody drive past three dental offices to get to yours? And if you're not thinking about that every day and pretty much in front of every patient, right. then you're missing an opportunity. Yeah. So there's a lot of competition out there, right? And, and so we have to be thinking, how are we going to be different? Yeah. So internal referrals, having a great experience. I love having uh, new patient gifts. You know, they, they come in, making sure, again, if you apply what they need done clinically to the value of what's important to them then you're, you're going to be good with, you know, the right. internal referrals in, and then, you know, have your team get out there and do some business to business, um, you know, shake hands, kiss babies, you know, all that right. stuff. You yeah. need your community to know that you're there. Right. And I um, have a big passion for many years. I've got involved with outreach. And so anytime I get into an office, I ask them to consider partnering with a homeless shelter or, huh toys for tots or whatever they feel passionate about and bring that into the dental office. Cause that gives a unique experience to the patient. Sure. They can actually give back to the community and they see that you care about something other than dentistry as well. And that helps build the relationship. So that goes really, uh, you know, really wide um, as an overview, but, but that's basically it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate your time. This has been really good information. I know that um, our our base is going to get a lot of great info out of this. If somebody's watching this and they're like, "Yes, I need I need some help like this," what's the best way to reach out to you and and work with you? Yeah, so I have um, a website, uh, Simplified COO. Um, okay. So they can definitely reach out to that. I'm on you know LinkedIn. They can look up for Kevin Wheeler specifically. Um, and you know, my, my email is simplified COO at yahoo.com. So yeah, what's, the, what's the process when somebody reaches out, do you do like a free consultation or something like that? Just kind of yes. see where you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. free consultation, I'm not really big on the contracts because again, I build my business around relationships mm -hmm. and at any time, if, if, if they don't see the value of the services, I'm not going to hold them to anything specifically. Right. Yeah. So Same I'm more about, I'm here to serve. And, and I, you know, I hope to be a good fit for them. Awesome. Kevin, thanks again so much for taking the time. Um, I know that this is going to be hugely valuable for a lot of people. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you. Great. And thanks everybody for tuning in for another uh, episode of the Dental and Orthodontic Marketing Podcast. Be sure to check back with us next week for another great guest.